You know, at this guy's young age, he was part of NHL history. The biggest trade in the NHL uh, involving Chicago and Atlanta who turned out to be the Calgary Flames. But when this guy made the NHL, a lot of people were confused. It sounded, his name sounds like a Swede. He wasn't a Swede. He was born and bred in Saskatchewan. So today we're going to be talking about one of the key players of the Atlanta Flames in that mid-1970s era where they were always knocking at the door in the playoffs but never broke through. Harold Filipov. Now, Harold Filipov was born in Camsack, Saskatchewan. They make him big there. 6'3", 220, a big drink of water. Now, he was raised in Kenora, Saskatchewan. Now, he first came to Major Providence with Bellingham of the BC uh, JHL, which as a lot of people knew was a big development uh, program for junior A players across uh, West Coast and the Midwest of Canada. He eventually graduated to the Westminster program at the WCHL, and his draft year was his best. Uh, the left winger uh, had 89 points in 67 games in 76. Now... He was a Memorial Cup All-Star first team in 76, which a lot of scouts saw his talented work there. He was eventually rated in the Hockey News draft preview issue as the WCHL's number six prospect for the 76 draft. Now, we knew he was going to go top 10, and that's what happened. He went 10th overall uh, by the Flames. He got his debut in the NHL on October 13, 77, with his famous number 24, when he played against Boston. Now, he only had a few years in the NHL, and the problem was with Harold. He started uh, his career in junior as a high goal scorer, but for some reason in the NHL, he lost his scoring touch. In only 141 games in the regular season with Atlanta and Chicago, he had 26 goals and 57 assists for 83 points, with, of course, 267 minutes and penalties. He wasn't scared to be uh, an enforcer at times and drop the gloves. Now, what really hurt him was a bad knee injury in 78 when he had ligament damage in his right knee. Now, he also set the Atlanta Calgary rookie record since broken with 128 penalty minutes in 78. Now, uh, at the time, that was also the uh, the rookie record for penalty minutes by a left wing. And like I said, he was on and off enforcer, but he showed, you know, good talent. But the knee problems uh, that he had in 78 followed him in 79 when he injured his left, left knee. In 1980, there was another big problem. He had a left ankle injury that required surgery for chronic tendonitis. Now, he was eventually traded to Chicago in one of the biggest deals in NHL history and the biggest deals at the time. Uh, Atlanta had traded Filipov, Tom Lasiak, Pat Ribble, Greg Fox, and Miles Zaharko to Chicago in exchange for Ivan Boldarev, Phil Russell, and Darcy Rhoda on March 13, 79. Now, this eight player deal was again the biggest at the time of players involved in NHL history, and all eight had their own uh, strong careers. Now, what surprised a lot of people, Filipov and Lasiak being big prospects for a number of years, to be dropped off to Chicago, but uh, Atlanta was wanted Boulder Rev and Rhoda and Phil Russell as well. Phil Russell was still a quality player at the time. Now eventually Chicago decided to remove him when he was traded by Chicago with Dave Logan to Vancouver for Ron Selbauer on December 21st, 79, but never played <coughs> for the parent team. Now in the minor leagues, he was very strong as well. He won a Calder Cup with Nova Scotia in 77. That was a big merge between Atlanta and Montreal for the minor league players. Now, he was big on the WHA radar. He was 28 overall in 76 in the third round. Now, of course, Nova Scotia won the regular season title in 77. And he was also part of the CHL regular season title winners with Dallas in 81. Now, uh, his his uh, older brother, George Filipov, was also a great major league player. What really confused, again, a lot of people when he first made it, the media had to remind everybody, no, this is not a Swede or a Finn. This is a guy, again, from, uh, from Saskatch uh, Saskatchewan. Now, going over the rough stats, in 77 with Nova Scotia, which I really don't understand what happened. He only had six goals in a regular season in 67 games. When he got called up to Atlanta in 78, he almost tripled his goal uh, production in his rookie campaign with 17 assists and 30, uh, 17 goals and 36 assists for 53 points. Now, 79 in, uh, in the merge year between Atlanta and Chicago, in 65 games, he had 9 goals and 21 assists for 30 points. 1980, again, a uh, terrible year 
year in Chicago, only nine games, and he played with Dallas for the majority of the year in the CHL with 63 points, including 26 goals in 75 games. Now, when he found his way to Vancouver, he was eventually sent to the minors and became a one-year sensation with the infamous Franklin Express by former uh, home province uh, team in the AHL. And his last full campaign in the AHL, he had 47 points in 58 games with the magic 120-plus penalty minutes. So again, final NHL totals, 26 goals in 141 games, 83 points in total, and two points in the playoffs. And he was part of Chicago's short run in the 79 postseason. season. So injuries really uh, hurt him, but that tendonitis in the ankle, I mean, uh, the type of game he played, to play at the, the major, junior, and the NHL and the minor league level for a decade with such wonky knees and ankles kind of caught up with him, but... You know, New Westminster was a very strong team uh, in the mid-1970s. He was a big part of it. And, of course, that uh, uh, Memorial Cup uh, run, which was uh, quite strong. Now, I want to go over a little bit about the, the, the WCHL uh, that, that year. New Westminster had one of their best records ever that year with 54-14-4. Now, uh, they defeated Brandon five games to nothing in the quarterfinals, defeated Victoria 4 nothing in the uh, the league and won the title against the Sask- Sask- Saskatoon four, four games won, uh, two loss and one tie. So again, uh, New Westminster, again, Memorial Cup finalists that year. And ladies and gentlemen, we got to remember, pay, pay, players like Filipov, there are projects. And again, with the, the, the right physical acumen, he probably would have been a 20-goal scorer, uh, you know, be able to drop the gloves every once in a while. Comparable uh, for a big size player, if Mike Keane was a little bit bigger or even like a Dougie Risebrow. But uh, the, th- the, the thing is, I would love to see him skate with, uh, with Calgary. If they would have kept uh, kept him, and Chicago obviously was before Denny Savard arrived, but he would have been a perfect line mate for Savard, like a second line, because Filipov had talent. I mean, you don't win the WCHL title in the mid seventies uh, without players like him. He's a really, really talented guy. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the latest of our Calgary Atlanta. Uh, Vintage Podcast. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, you hear the word Filipov. It's Saskatchewan. It's not Sweden. Although we look quite Swedish, so that's where the confusion came in. Thanks for listening. Bye.